Okay, what I'm going to do here is show you what's going on in the three coil system that I've posted in the video. Uh, I've received a new rear end restructuring out in some of the public forums by people that have no idea of what what's going on in the world whatsoever except their own ego. But I want to take and show this to you. This piece of paper shows the cardinal points of how this coil is sitting on the bench in my lab. This is the north, east, west, and south. And there's nothing hooked to this coil at all. It's an L3 coil. If you followed my work at all, you know what an L3 is. If not, maybe you should check into the work. The spectrum analyzer, as you see here, I have it set for a span of 40, 40 megahertz, with a center frequency of 20 megahertz. And I'm going to go back to this coil, and I'm going to insert the probe, just this piece of coax with the tip on it, into the end of this coil. i got to move it this way a little bit. Okay, we've got that set up. Wasn't very well prepared, I can tell you. Okay, what I take and want to do now is show you what we're seeing on the spectrum analyzer. Not a whole lot, are we? In fact, nothing has really changed here that we can say has taken place. So we'll let this coil sit here for a minute. I'm going to take and back this. I want to move this back out of here a ways. And let it just sit there for a couple of seconds, maybe 30 or 40, to where it will go into resonance at its spatial resonant frequency. Now I know if you're a conventional thinker and you've been taught in the same universities I have, you're going to say, what is this idiot talking about? Well, there's a significant difference between self-resonant frequency and spatial resonant frequency. And I have a paper inscribed. Uh, it will be back on my website as soon as the hackers leave me alone and I find a new hosting service. But anyway, the paper will describe how you determine and how you measure the difference between self-resonant frequency and spatial resonant frequency. Okay, I think we've probably left this long enough now to where this coil now has established an oscillation on its own based upon the spatial resonant frequency of this coil. That SRF is determined by the number of turns, the size of the wire, the length of the coil, and the interwinding capacities of the coil itself. Now this will vary significantly from a self-resonant frequency because you test and excite the coil for the spatial resonant frequency by only exciting one end of the coil from one end of your generator. So anyway, go out and look for those papers, look for those explanations, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So let's take a look at the spectrum analyzer and see if anything's going on here. Well, lo and behold, we're now seeing something. If you notice right here, we have a very weak signal coming from the probe in that coil. Now we didn't have that before, and I will assure you, I'll take and go ahead and move a marker over to it, that that is the spatial resonant frequency of this coil. Let me go ahead and adjust the marker and bring it over. Okay, I've got the marker sitting right on top. And we're looking at the SRF of being 29.8 megahertz. And granted, we're minus 70 dBm down, but that's a material. We're going to take and demonstrate something a little better as we move along here. But you can see that this coil now is actually oscillating without anything connected to it. Now let me go down here. Pull this wire out of the coil, okay, it's free and clear, let's go back up and look, and all we have here is the marker, which I'm moving around. There's no longer an oscillation taking place in that coil, okay? Alright, now I'm going to cut this into multiple video sections because we're going to do 
a number of things with this little coil for the demonstration. So this is going to be part one of SRF demo. Okay, bye.